All right, welcome back. If you haven't um, heard the first episode of this, then go back and listen to it. The Sabrina Zunit case. She says, Megan loves in Damn it. I know you're going to yes. say that. Yes, <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. I can't wait to watch it. I freaking love Moana. So it was John wedding, loves Moana too. Wedding. It's so good. Cor- it's like it's like it's constantly stuck in my head. And there's so much Hamilton in it and Moana. I mean, Lin Manuel, Chef's kiss. He's great. For a second, he followed me on Twitter. I have a screenshot to prove it. For a second, cool. Yeah, because I looked again and he wasn't there. But I do. I did. I do have a screenshot. He's like, fuck, I didn't mean to follow her. It was a different gender. Probably, but I mean, <laughs> what if he listens to this? Probs not, but. Don't we have that football great. player that listens to this? I know we got celebrities that listen to us. We have to at this point. At this point, law of large numbers. In, in like, fact, we're here. Or like, we have celebrities that listen to us for one episode. It's like, no. what the fuck is this? <laughs> in, <laughs> in fact, the fucking uh, description I put as our podcast description says we have. Did you, have y'all seen that? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is our description. For the podcast. <laughs> on iTunes? I, I saw the one on, on the everywhere. website. Uh, when you put on the website, it was good. It says, um, worldwide worldwide, and endorsed by real celebrities in Hollywood, <laughs> California. <laughs> <laughs> real celebrities. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Real celebrities. <laughs> I'm as tough as the crust hey, of give the me, earth is. Pour some of that in mine. Was... You have some. You have the whole bottle. No, you, but... And you also grabbed a cup of ice, which is right behind you. Oh. Any deuce? If you got the freaking bottle. Do you need help? Let me help you. Go because for it. I <clears throat> I was mean to you in the first part of this episode. The first pa- pass her the cup. You of were ice. mean to me the first three years of this fucking <laughs> Yes. I'm sorry, is it opposite day? On the last episode, we talked about the foster daughter, Sabrina Zunik, and her troubled life, but then she found she found the Kniefels, or she came across Lisa Kniefel, which, and Lisa worked in the department for uh, child abuse. She was a social worker, so she was perfect to take her in. Things were working great, but... Then on November 16, 2012, the 911 call says it all. 178 stab wounds in her 5 foot 8, 150 pound body. She was still alive midway through the 911 call. When the when when Steve Lukic arrived on scene, and he is a fireman and EMT. He claims that he couldn't even run an IV into the mother because her veins had collapsed. Oh. She was without blood, nearly drained of blood. According to Dr. Joseph Philo, which was the medical examiner, there were two lethal injuries. I don't think you can actually know the lethal injury. Take a guess right quick. How many? Give me a number. Give me a number of times. Well, if you said that it was more than we've ever... 215. Yeah, I was going to say it's got to be at least north of 200. The whole time that 911 call was playing, I think it was like two and a half minutes. 911 call happened 115 a.m. Police got there 117 a.m., which is very quick, very fast response. You know, very good for the police. She was stabbing the whole time. She was stabbing the whole time through the 911 call. And the whole time the officer was there until she finally came out of the room. According to Dr. Joseph Philo, the medical examiner, one of the lethal injuries, and I found two that he said, one of the lethal injuries was being stabbed through the jaw area, which was the mandible. And that particular one went far enough to sever the carotid artery. And I'm pulling this directly from the autopsy findings. Another lethal wound was through her breast, penetrated, and collapsed her lung. Several of the wounds were complex. And that is a, a terminology. I haven't seen that before. So complex, quote, complex, end quote. That is the terminology. And it's something new to me. I haven't seen that. I don't know if there's by state. I've never seen a medical examiner use that word. Maybe I'm just ignorant. But 
that what what do you think complex wounds mean? Take that, a guess. It's not just like a simple. In You're and talking out. to the microphone. It's not a sim. Oh, sorry, I thought I was. Uh, it's not like a simple in and out. It's, it was probably something like in, nah, then pull out. I'm gonna say it's that there were so many cuts that it's hard to like discern the wound itself. What do you guys think in live chat? Complex wounds. Complex wounds. What this guy was talking about, Dr. Philo, was there was a twisting motion either by the stabber, Sabrina, stabbing, twisting, or the victim trying to squirm. So if a knife wound, if an if a knife is buried in your body through your chest cavity or whatever, and you squirm your body, you're twisting. You're doing more damage, right? Because you're twisting your body. Right. And that knife is just cutting up more space in the body. So that's what the complex kind of term means. This is from the cor- this is from the coroner. Multiple stab and incised wounds, at least 178 in total, of head and neck, torso, and extremities. 178. I think you guys overestimated. I think I kind of made it seem well, like Well, you it. said it was the most, and I was trying to <laughs> I think. I mean, like, wh- who else most? have we done? You know what's funny? We had a couple that were, like, small, yeah. but a lot. Yeah, Before but, I like, 100. 40 or 50, not 178. And, and those small... So you're talking about the Ellen Greenberg yes. case, which is now in the media again. The parents filed... Um, uh, I can't remember the term, but they're they're trying to get the case re-looked at because they don't believe it's a suicide. You're talking about... The reason Ellen Greenberg had 48 stab wounds or whatever is because she was like testing it and they were very small. Yeah. On this case specifically, especially if you think about when she goes into the room, she starts stabbing. The mother, Lisa Kniefel, is trying to defend herself. There's no small stab wounds here they're completely down and out completely stabbed through there's no superficial none of that stuff completely down to the hilt stab wounds with this so you guys aren't gonna believe me but i'm gonna say it anyway that before i said 215 i was gonna say 176 oh, oh shit oh well, number I one that's not believe it. it's not even right jen it's 178 i know but i was gonna guess 176 i was still wrong but i was close <laughs> We don't believe you, Jen. It's fine. And I feel like we've yelled at you for that same thing before. You have, but I wanted to share it anyway. You should know better. No, I want to share what's on my mind. 150, that... 178. I know, damn it. Let me tell the damn story. Fuck. 150, that is how much Lisa Knievel weighed. 150 pounds. 150 pounds, very tiny, right? That's tiny for a female, right? I, I don't so, know. That sounds uh, fucked up. It's about average. I don't yeah. know. I mean, so, I'm some, like way above average. I'm fucking waistline. gotten fat, dude. I'm like 226. Oh, no. But I mean, the most I, of that's I, muscle, I, obviously. I wish I was 226. I can, I can stand to lose like 30 from when I I'm, was actually I'm, in a good, in good I shape. I could stand to lose about 100 pounds. I'm 226, but most of it is... I'm not going to say it's muscle, but a lot of it is my my jaw because it's so well so defined strong. and strong, like a Paul Bunyan. You have Dude, nice arms too. Oh, Jen. Well, I, I will say that it's it's normal after you get married if you're happy or if you've been in a relationship for a long time. If you're happy, you do get a gut. Yeah, gain gain some weight. It's a happiness. Know? It's it's a happiness thing, and it makes you comfortable. Happy. I'm pretty happy in this marriage. She's an arm girl. Oh, you're pretty happy. Oh, same, same, <laughs> Megan. You're pretty happy. And at ice. least it's better than when you said, "Oh, how was marriage?" It has its ups and downs. It does. What the fuck? You want me to be? You want me to lie about it? Would never say that. You want to be like, "Oh my god, well, we're such got, a team." He did get mad at you for when you said that you loved him more today than oh, yesterday. I know. I thought time, that was, which was the sweet. sweetest thing. And he was like. <laughs> I love you more and more every day. So you didn't love me yesterday. And that's what you took away from it. The coroners counted 178 stab wounds. And you guys got to remember the victim here, Lisa Knievel, 5'8", 150 pounds. She was still alive midway through the attack, at least from what we know. 
And I don't want to listen to that 911 call again, but I'm pretty sure you can hear, you can definitely hear some kind of banging going on. I think I'm thinking the knife was going so far it was like hitting the headboard because she was in the bed when this happened. She was stabbed 62 times in the head and neck, some as deep as an inch into her face and three inches into her neck. An inch into her face. Oh, my God. And these were complex wounds, too. So she stabbed. uh, This is terrible. She was stabbed 62 times in the head and neck, some as deep as an inch into her face, three three inches into her neck. She was stabbed 27 times in her torso, some digging deeper than three inches into her chest and lungs. I'm pulling this directly from the autopsy findings. She was stabbed 89 times in her arms and legs. When her body arrived for the autopsy, her left pinky and right and right thumb had been nearly completely amputated mm. from the, the stabbings. So, pretty terrible, eh? Sorry to just ruin the fucking mood like that. Fuck. This is a Sorry for podcast. doing the fucking podcast. <laughs> Tell me what you guys think so far. I told you that she had a terrible life. I told you Sabrina had a terrible life, but now she is with this family that loves her. She's got everything on track. Like, what happened? It's not drugs. So I'm putting that off the table. What's your next guess? Tell me about the family. Um, maybe the, maybe she felt as though she was not treated equal to the nuclear children. 178 times because you're not treated as a part of the nuclear biological family. Maybe there was a like mental condition because the dad had some issues that went on. So she has some father issues. No, like uh, the dad wasn't the dad. Didn't she say like schizophrenia or I forget what what you said. It, the father had history of. Did she have mental disorders that were untreated? If you want to read this, this is going to take the case in a completely new direction, and you guys are going to immediately know why. If you want to read this. Um, In the fall of 2012, Zunik began attending South High School. Kevin, the foster father, would usually drive Zunik to school in the morning, a 10-minute drive, during which time they would engage in sexual activity. Oh, no. See, I told you. I told you when I, as soon as I saw that guy that he was guilty of something. No, you did not. I did. I said he said it, and you said that's the grieving father. Yep. A 10-minute drive. Low job and fingering to be, I didn't finish. Oh, no, we're going to get into the sex, sexual oh, stuff okay. they were having. She was jealous of the mother because she was in a sexual relationship or with the father. She, a or ten- she was pissed at her, that her mother would allow that type of abuse to happen. All right, was all right, the mother right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me put this in perspective. <laughs> uh, you, you're about to yell. A 10-minute drive during which they would engage in sexual activity, which was blowjob and fingering. Fingering. That is like such a high school sort of terminology. But she was in high school. In fact, the sexual activity is when he drove her to South High School every morning. As you'll hear her say out of her own mouth, the routine was pull down his pants and start giving him a blowjob. And then he'll finger me on the way to high school. So I'm now, sorry. Now, hold on. Let me put let me put this in perspective. Let's go back. The foster father. His wife is murdered. The wife worked social services for not only sex abuse victims, but also incest victims. And the father, which is the predator, the I'm not saying. Father. He wasn't there at the time. He wasn't at the house at the time of the murder. He didn't do it. Obviously. The foster father began predatory actions when she was 16. The day, the, when she first moved in. That's awful. That's fucking awful. I think that's worse than the stab wounds itself. The fa- the The foster... She, Sabrina, right? I'm not sticking up for her, but she had a 
fucking terrible life up into her teenage years. And obviously now terrible. She was abused. She was vulnerable, extremely vulnerable. She started getting her act together and her life. More importantly, when she met the Kniffles and became a family, that was she was doing really well. Her grades were improving. She had goals. And then the fucking foster father started fingering her. To put it in perspective, yes, I'm going to vomit. That's what you're saying on live chat. Yep. It's fucked. It's very, it's not just predatorial as far as she was underage, which she was, but it's, it's terrible to take someone that is completely entrusting you to save them their life for you to do that. Terrible. So was this the only foster child that they had, this couple had? Well, that, yeah, yeah, at the time, yes. They had other foster children. Were they also abused to come to find out later? This was the first teenager that was in the home. Now, so possibly the or do yeah. We know? Now let, let me. That's a good question. Like, this, was this a pattern that went uncovered until now? This is the foster father. It just sucks. Like he should have been the one stabbed. You know what I mean? Oh, he wasn't there. Yeah, I know. But or he should have. He, he should have. You know, like he he's the abuser. What do you think happened now? What, what what do you think? Oh my god! Why did you kill my wife? Why? I did not think that would ever happen. Is that what you think happened, or do you think he had some mastermind plan? Oh. Did he try to get the wife killed? Was I don't know. You tell me. He wanted the wife killed so he could be with his step foster, foster daughter. Oh god, that's some fucking Woody Allen shit. Woody Allen. Yeah, he yeah, he's he was married with Mia to his Farrow, he's married to his adopted daughter. He adopted a girl. They adopted a girl, and then he married her. All right, just so people are yelling on live chat right now. Just let me really just fucking drive at home. I also let, would let like, me just really no, fucking no, no, drive it home it. right now. I got to say one thing. I'll just really drive it the fuck home. You guys will you guys will unsubscribe immediately. How about this scenario? If I say that this really happened, which I don't know how I would make this up. Sabrina kills the wife after the foster husband, after her husband, Kevin Kniefel, makes her fall in love with him. So the plan is now this. I'm just saying this. We'll get to this. But what if this happened? What if the plan for the future was Okay, Sabrina, since I've been fingering you and we've had vaginal intercourse, which we'll get to because it's documented, and now you're in love with me. In fact, on your phone, my name is Kevin Love. That's the name of a, of a, a Cleveland Cavalier, Cavalier basketball player. What, what, if, what if we do this? What if... You kill my wife. We live happily ever after, and then you raise my three-year-old daughter. Excuse me, what? <laughs> Pardon, I don't. I don't think I heard you correctly. I think I did, but I don't think I want. In to Sabrina's her. mind, she believed that once Lisa was out of the way, she would be with Kevin and raise his three-year-old daughter as her own and in fact because the mother started figuring out this sexual abuse and we we're going to talk about it at one point the mother actually snatched a three-year-old Haley away from sabrina because she felt like sabrina was trying to mother that daughter that makes sense you know mm. Fucking crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah, she is. I mean, in her mind, I, I believe she's a child. It's like a Barbie world. Honestly, I'm going to run away with this guy. 
and then I'm going to father, father. I'm, I'm going to, and then I'm going to mother this daughter as my own. This, oh my God. <laughs> the murder happened November 16th, 2012. Kevin had nothing to do with it, right? The, the, by the foster father, we, he can't have anything to do with it. I don't believe that. He was described as quote, relatively calm in quote, and gave the patrolman Molinex the, the one that was pointing the gun and defuse the situation quote a strange preface saying that he was some kind of emt before and he had seen stuff like this numerous times and i wasn't going to tell him anything that he hasn't seen before and he wanted to know every detail about what happened this is the murder night kevin wasn't home he drives home crime scene tape everywhere he wants to see the wife's body because he is, quote, some kind of EMT. And he has, quote, seen stuff like this numerous times. You walk home, your wife is brutally murdered, and you've seen stuff like this a bunch of times, so you want to see the body. Are you, uh, what the fuck? Oh, my God. Would you want to see m my dead body if something bad happened to me, knowing that you've seen a t ton of, like, terrible no, things? You know what I mean? No, what the fuck? I'm just saying, like, that's how abnormal yeah. it is. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter just because you've seen terrible things doesn't mean you want to see your spouse. Also, he's not a fucking EMT. He's a goddamn truck driver. No, no, no judgment. We got a lot of truck driver friends, but he's not an EMT. He drives a truck. So he, he's he's lying to the police officer. Yeah. He's, he's just super interested in seeing his wife, dad. And yeah, dad. it's fucked up. That is messed up. Detective, yeah, convenient. How convenient. I mean, he wasn't there. He can't get charged for it. Detective Brian Jackson said that Kevin wanted to enter the bedroom and, quote, displayed no emotion and said that he wanted to see it for himself, end quote. Now, let's talk about the murder morning. Okay, that happened 115 on November 16th. What's Kevin's day after that? I mean, obviously, he's grieving the whole day. Or does he still drive the girl to school? Or no, she was taken away. No, she was taken away. She's arrested, obviously. She doesn't talk about any of this, the sexual stuff, for six months. But Kevin has a pretty eventful morning. So November 16th, your your wife dies 1.15 a.m., wee hours in the morning. You're waking up in the morning. Oh, I got a big day ahead of me. Ugh. I think I should contact that benefit specialist at my work. Gordon Food Services. I'm going to file that insurance claim. Less than nine hours later. He, he had, files the insurance claim less than nine hours later? Yeah. During the day. Your wife is not even out of the house yet. <sighs> your wife's body is still being bagged up. And you're filing not one, but too many to even count. Two insurance policies, multiple policies for from the company, sixty-three thousand dollars from Golden Food Services as a life insurance policy, and an, another one for seventy thousand. Now this is the same fucking day. This is not even twenty-four hours later. He literally, the wife is. I mean, holy fuck, dude! I know it takes like four hours for the body to the temperature to go down to the catatonic state or whatever, but it was literally then. Nine hours later, if that is like when it went, he's like waiting by the fucking clock. God dang it. When's the work hour fucking start? I need to get this fucking money. Okay. Another claim, American General Life, 250,000 policy. Wow. Now he's doing this all. He's got a big day ahead of him. $250,000 policy, which he was issued $251,685. He goes then. I mean, very efficient. I, I don't know if I'd be able to do all these in one day. He then... Contacts Guardian Life, and he gets paid out $249,542.34. So he's already over five hundred k, and the wife is not even at the freaking, you know, freezer yet. He And when were those insurance policies purchased? I'll get to their marriage, but it was very short, five years maybe. He also notifies OPERS, O-P-E-R-S, which is Ohio Public Employee Retirement System. That's where the wife worked, Lisa, and they entitled him to 
a stipend of $1,030.51 a month. Okay, that's what, four, five already? Four, that's four. One, two, three, no, one, two, three, four, five. Did I say Guardian Life yet? The 250? Yeah, so that's yep. four, and then five is Opers. The sixth is, the sixth one is a guy named Frank Zingel. He was an insurance uh, owner, and I couldn't find out the exact, that is locked up. I couldn't find out the exact sum of that payout. But the Frank Zingel Insurance is a smaller company. He then contacts Farmers Insurance. And he's paid out $150,286.50. And I, I wrote in here, but, well, you know, that's he's got to pay for the funeral, right? That's why he's doing That's why people get life insurance, right? The company he works for actually issued the funeral home the exact amount of the funeral burial services. So that was a big day. I think six or seven insurance policies. And he got them all. They just fucking pay him out, I guess. I mean, the, the, the thing about it, though, is what I learned. The reason you get fucking caught is because it's not because you file an insurance policy after you kill your spouse or something like that. It's because if it's a freaking homicide or something suspicious, that insurance office is going to contact the police because you know what? They would rather not pay a killer $250,000 if you killed your wife and trying to cash out on them. They're going to, con every one of these companies contacted the police. So now the police is getting called by seven different freaking insurance offices. Hey, you know, this is Farmers. Hey, this is American General Life. Hey, this is, is yeah. and the, these cops are like, are you fucking serious? How many how many policies can How there many, be? Exactly. What the fuck? Holy shit. He also, and somehow in that freaking day, he had the time to deactivate both Lisa and Sabrina's phone lines and shut down their Facebook accounts completely. He said, quote, so he would not have to deal with people leaving messages, end quote. I think this is the time where you could just delete your Facebook and not wait 30 days. Fucking crazy, isn't it? But of course, he had nothing to do with it. Right, that's what you think. So Sabrina's in prison, and she didn't say shit for six months. But then this asshole is fucking taking trips and private fucking jets. I mean, he's rich now, right? Mm. If you want to read this. In the months following Lisa's death, Kevin changed the policy on the home at 2518 Chagrin Drive from renters to homeowners insurance and installed a swimming pool. Kevin also took out automobile insurance on a 2013 cruise, a 2011 Malibu and two campers. Huh. Living the life. <laughs> Living the life. Jesus fucking Christ. What do you guys think of this shit? He's Garbage. Of dirt. This is, this is what you got to watch out for when you go to that tiki bar, man. You got to watch out for some asshole like this seducing you and freaking getting... Getting wrapped up in all this bullshit. That's the problem. Jen, stop playing with your watch. I'm sorry. It just vibrated. It was on 10%, so I'm going to leave it alone. Everyone call Jen right now, so it does. I don't have friends to call me. Bullshit, Jen. You know who doesn't have friends? Me and Nicole. She doesn't have friends either. No, you guys have friends. You have me. You literally live with friends. You moved out from us. You left us, abandoned us here. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck he's still not over it <laughs> i'll never get over it i'm here he's gonna he's gonna be think haunting you for 30 more years about this at least no it'll be like i will he will i will literally be on my death i do not hold grudges no <laughs> but think about okay so it's not like i moved out and like moved right down the street to another or was renting a room from another person in mount pleasant like i went out yeah like, you literally moved away from us i moved <laughs> close to my job and i bought my own house it'd be different if i moved like i feel like it would be worse if I moved out from here and moved to like an apartment building in Mount Pleasant or like moved in to rent another room in Mount Pleasant. But like I moved closer to work and I bought my own house. So I, I feel like that is not as bad. I agree. 
Don't feel bad. It's Jen. not. It's not about you. No, you don't you. have to feel bad. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's it's all about you. Did you read this? <laughs> he, he's just trying to make you feel bad. He, he does that. make me feel bad because I still feel, I still think you, about it. You should it. not feel bad. You should feel fucking terrible. I do. <laughs> All right, at the funeral, at the funeral, okay, smiling on his face, greeting everyone. I mean, he's fucking rich, right? He's like I'm a fucking rich, bitch. He's literally a millionaire from all these fucking policies. I mean, do the policies, do they not, are they not connected? If I pull out 10 policies on you, Nicole, would they not know? Is there not a system? Guess not. So I, I also uh, feel like it, uh, like it, there should be an addendum to life insurance policies that if someone has a life insurance policy taken out on them, they should be notified. They have to. You have to sign off on it. So, like, if John were, wanted to have a policy on me, I would need to sign that. So, like, but if you have like multiple policies, wouldn't that be suspicious? Yeah, hell yeah, it would. But but what are they doing? Like forging signatures? He could be, could be, could be fraud. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you, John. What have you been doing? I mean, as long as you have like a base signature that she has signed before, it's really easy. You know, I used to have a um, when I was eighteen. For some reason, I bought a condo. You know, because I was in the military, and they gave me a loan for some reason. Oh, I thought you were said. I thought you were going to say you bought a condom. <sighs> Because no. good for you. Who uses those? I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, I bought this condo and I went to sign the papers, you know, and, and the the owner of the condo is there. And the condo was under a guy's name, but it was the wife there. And she looked fuck. It was it was actually really kind of cheap, low part of town condo. Anyway, the wife was looking very pissed off. And eventually, like, I didn't say anything, but she looked at me and she said, or or she said something to the fact of, I didn't know my husband had this. And in fact, this is like the eighth one we've sold that we didn't know he had. (gasps) This was his sex pad. (laughs) He was bringing prostitutes. (laughs) John's like, I hope this gives me good luck. He's like... He's like, wait a minute. So they know where the address is already? <laughs> Great. That works perfectly. Perfect. Oh, shit. So Kevin Kniefel seemed pretty happy at the funeral. He actually asked everyone to pray for Sabrina and that he hadn't given up on her, even though he just stabbed his wife 178 times. No, she stabbed the wife. She stabbed the wife. The next day, November 17th, big day after, big day. What, what are we going to do? I'm going to take the day off work. Well, it was Sunday. I need to call the house cleaners. We need to get my wife's stuff out of this house. Okay, she's been dead for 24 hours. Her stuff needs to be cleaned out completely. It's like we were talking about the Christmas decorations before. Mm -hmm. Clean out my wife's stuff. I want everything that reminded me of all the pictures, all that shit go. Get it out. He contacts Rainbow International and he tells the manager because the manager actually goes to the police and he's like, "Uh, you know, I don't I've never done this before. But (laughs) the guy said, quote, he had two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in life insurance policy and that cost didn't matter, end quote. And he also asked the man to, quote, look for a finger and a ring that might be in the bedroom, end quote. A finger and a ring? Yeah. Like so she was missing a finger? That's what he thought. He was trying to get the ring so he could guess pawn the ring or some shit. What the the detective probably, probably you remember I said this fingers were almost severed? Yeah. Maybe he got some misinformation or something mm. or whatever. I don't know. All right. Let's talk about this couple. And by couple, I mean father and daughter. Ugh. All I know is I'm going to find like some type of marriage certificate in a mailbox at my house (laughs) with my name forged to it. What the fuck? So that y'all can take out a life insurance policy on me. Sabrina and Kevin sitting in a tree. Well, actually. K-I-S-S-F-I-N-G-E-R-I-N-G. Actually, Sabrina was sitting in prison for six months until the lawyers like, listen. 
everyone knows your foster father's been having sex with you. I mean, there's no proof. All your friends from high school came forward. They know, we know about a life insurance policy. We know who Kevin Love is. At this point, Ohio has the death penalty. You're 18, lethal injection. Oof. Do you want that? Kevin, on the other hand, is buying campers and he's taking vacations to Bermuda and he's basically rich and he doesn't see you anymore, does he? No, he doesn't come in here. So she said, she said, all right, when I was 16, I moved in. I was on nine different medications and I was hearing voices. She was ecstatic to have her life turned around. Lisa Kniefel brought her in and she thought, Sabrina thought that her life was now, it had purpose. Finally, I have an adult figure that doesn't abuse me, either abuse me or just fucking send me out to, to someone else's problem. Finally, someone's going to whip my ass in shape. And that's what Lisa was doing. She was, I think that's why it was the 178 times. I think it was because Lisa made her more of a woman and she, she needed that. And she loved that. And I think after Kevin seduced her, it was more of a, I, I don't I can't explain it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, she like in her way. And they're not in her way, but she, she, Sabrina loved her sisters, loved the three year old, loved the mother, and her life was getting turned around the whole time. She was doing better. She was looking better. Everything was going great. She had purpose. She was going to be a massage therapist. Like everything was great. Her parents were going to help her out with college, everything. So Kevin seduced her into killing his wife. And I think the stab wounds were just, I think it was like her getting it out on him. Almost. I don't know. I can't really explain it. It's like her life being over, basically. When Sabrina was 16, she moved on. She was on nine different medications. She heard voices. She tells her father, her foster father, who was not the disciplinarian. He, you know, he would joke with her on her wife. She told him that she dreams of being a massage therapist. And he says, great, you can practice on my inner thighs. Oh. This is how the sex started is because, I mean, dude, That's just the like fucking real- worst type of fucking predator ever, okay? Like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? I, I saw this clip of, um, what's the show with Chris Hansen? To Catch a Predator. Oh, I love that show, To Catch a Predator. To <laughs> Catch a Predator. I saw this clip of To Catch a Predator where this guy, he was meeting with, you know, a non actual teenager and he he brought a pizza and then Chris yes! Hansen came out and he was like do you want a slice of pizza did you see that yeah one? That, that's the famous guy yeah yeah he's like a I watch all those clips man I I can not remember that guy's name but he's like real famous now as far as not in a good way yeah. I mean he's a fucking child yeah. predator but like he's all over the internet as far yeah. as his memes and shit <laughs> Because he eats the pizza and yeah. he's, just like, <laughs> he's just like eating it. And then he's like, do you want a pizza? And then, and then Chris Hans is like, do you need a napkin? Or? <laughs> he's like, no, I'm good. Because he's butt naked? No, but there there were some guys that walk in completely yeah. butt naked. It's, yeah. it's I love that show, oh, man. man. I love that fucking show, dude. <sighs> so there was to- one, he was, Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen's got his own problems too. Yeah, he he's Everyone a notorious fucking check bouncer. I see him in all the true crime. Like every time he bounces in her check, he shows up as a mugshot. Uh, you know. All right, let's finish this episode up. On Kevin's suggestion, Zunik began the habit of massaging his thighs. Over a period of a couple months, she began massaging his genitals. Uh. This occurred in various rooms of the Chagrin residence. Can I move this wire after this episode or is it stuck that way? Don't you can touch my wire. I'm not going to touch it. That's why I asked you. If I wanted to just touch right. it, I would have touched it. <laughs> okay, let's finish this one up. At the beginning the beginning of 2012, the entire family goes to a camping trip in North Carolina. Sabrina comes along. And during this time, 
I mean, this is the fucking the vernacular that the the police reports say and the court findings, right? During this time, father and daughter started masturbating each other. Oh, no. That is, is that not a fucking, like, high school? I mean, she is in high school. But this guy is a 40-fucking-year-old man, and he is now fingering and masturbating her. What a fucking piece of trash, dude. Like, you fucking... You, 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 it's not that you're a predator, which is terrible, but you, you took the fucking life, the hope that someone had to fix their life and be a better person and actually live a life we're fucking living. But, and now she's in fucking prison. But not just that, like you, like you work with some, you, you were married to someone who was an working, incest counselor like, yeah part, working for department of social services and you accepted a foster child into your home and it's the worst a- abused them exactly someone that vulnerable she Knowing. worked in, that she, sabrina came up because the lisa worked on incest family sex abuse cases that is how Sabrina came into the circulation. Now you're going to fucking take advantage of that? Dude. I mean... Lowest of the low. Fuck, dude. I, you know what? <sighs> fucking just terrible. It's man. disgusting, and it, it is very, it's very troubling. It's very troubling. Sydney on live chat asked a good question. He, she says that he wasn't doing anything to his biological children, was he? Megan, which was the the caller of the 911 caller, Megan, the one who called 911, was not his biological daughter. That was the biological daughter of Lisa from her ex-husband. Okay, that was her biological daughter, so Megan was the stepdaughter to Kevin. Kevin is pretty new on the scene, but the three-year-old, Haley... The three-year-old was the biological, or is, the biological daughter of Lisa and Kevin. So that is theirs, and that is the one that Sabrina wanted to raise as her own, because she's going to need a mom, right? It is so <clears throat> sad that she took out her, she she went, she was so manipulated into killing Lisa instead of, like, and I'm not, I am not vouching for murder but it's like like she was uh, she could have well, she w- yeah she could have taken it out on the her abuser but she was so kind of like brainwashed by him that well, she took it out by him that she followed what he asked why would why would she take it out on her abuser because right. because after this camping trip to north carolina when they started masturbating each other she started developing feelings for him now she starts to fall in love Fall in love. They start doing these little sexual innuendos and stuff. And her friends at school, who she's, this is the first time she's ever had friends, long-term friends. Her friends at school knew about it. They didn't know because she confessed, but one of her, one of her friends that was also arrested, but helped with the testimony, says Sabrina came to her trying to hire a hitman because Kevin said that, quote, she's better off, or what was it? The quote is something like, uh, oh, quote, she's worth more dead than alive, end quote. That's Lisa's worth more dead than alive. That was, Kevin started filling her head with, okay, we get this life insurance policy. You know, once the police stop looking or, you know, whatever, you could just say you blacked out. Remember I said she didn't remember what happened? Kevin's like, you could just say you blacked out. You don't know what happened. You're on all these meds. I won't be here anyway, so they can't implement me. Anyway, he's filling her head with all this stuff. She starts to fall in love with Kevin, which now you can pick up that stuff. If you're cheating on your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever, that person, your wife or whatever, they don't need proof. They know like little fucking things, right? It's like, why do you need a phone password or, or, you know, whatever, like, and that's in the home. He's cheating on the wife in the home. So it is known, right? 
they don't know, but they know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's little things don't add up type of shit. After this whole masturbating each other and falling in love and stuff like that, Megan, the number one caller, they start having fights, Sabrina, because I think she knows too that something's going on. This is when Lisa says, I want you out of the house completely. This was after she picks up Haley and and basically tries to mother, like practice mothering. It's like, oh, I guess I gotta, you know, this is my life now. I'm going to be your mother. You know, I'm going to be your mother. Let's do this type of thing. Lisa immediately snatches her away, says, I want you out of the house. I can't prove anything's happening, but... And remember, she was three weeks after 18. So the father had signed her over to continue, but the that was out of the mother's hand. The mother did not want her there anymore Got at all. She was about to be on the way out. Once this camping trip, when they're masturbating each other, Sabrina finally turned 17, and that's when she says she finally received vaginal intercourse from Kevin for the first time, and that's what really did it. To her, and this is her talking. This is her, her own testimony here. You can hear her say it. I just some sessions in our thighs, and it progressively got more up into the genitals. We get into the car, and I would give him a job. She says they would get in the car every morning, and the first thing she would do is give him a blowjob on the way to fucking high school. <laughs> fucking nuts, right? Gross. Yeah, it's gross. But to end this up, what what do you think? Obviously, this so was is, her sentence lessened. I guess knowing well, she was groomed. Yeah, oh, that's a great word, groomed. I, I, yeah. I can't take credit for it. What do you mean you can't take credit? Wolfie for Wolfie said it. So the plan that was the plan I put out earlier about you kill the wife, you kill my wife, get her out the way, you raise Haley as your own. We live out the life insurance policy is the fucking plan. That's the plan they made. I mean, you know, and it's crazy because this happened three weeks after she turned 18. They've been discussing this for months. The thing about this case is there's really no evidence. I mean, the husband wasn't there. There's no phone records, even though they could see. I read something on the report where. Every month, there would be like 2,000 texts going out between Kevin and Lisa, which is, you know, normal 2,000 or whatever it was. There was like 20,000 going out from Kevin and Sabrina type of thing. But they couldn't actually see the contents because what did he do the freaking day of, right? He canceled all that shit. Canceled the phone services, the Facebooks, all that shit. He wiped it, everything. He freaking cleaned the whole home. I got money. Money's not an issue. There's no evidence. So the, what's the evidence you have? They actually got one of her friends to try to go to his house, wear a wire, and try to get him to confess, but he didn't do it. So the jury has to convict this guy on the testimony of Sabrina. And she sure ain't going down alone, especially when... Because after six months, you realize this isn't love. This is this guy he used me type of thing. I don't know, fucking terrible. So she turned state's evidence. She got 30 years, 30 years in prison. Sabrina agreed to cooperate with investigators in August 2013. And she took a plea deal. And he was charged with conspiracy to commit aggravated murder and complicity to aggravated murder, as well as six counts of sexual battery. Sabrina, as part of her plea, she had to plead guilty. She pleaded guilty August 2014. Kevin Kniefel was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in 30 years, which means he'll be 80 before he paroles. Has eligibility for that. Yeah, it has eligibility for parole. Kevin Kniefel will be eligible for parole in 2043 when he is 73 years old. That's when he can first get out. I mean, it's just so sad. So the, like, the daughter, the biological daughter of the mother that was killed was only, I think he said 13. Mm. And wait, 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 
The what? The collar. His, the 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 daughter, Lisa's daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, like she was only thirteen. Yeah. And, so how? Ha- and the three year old leaving behind, like that's terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's her biological father. So I no, mean, the the collar. No, the oh, the, the collar. The, the I mean, collar. Uh, her, that's her. Yeah, her biological mother. Excuse me. But she would still, I imagine, had developed a bond with Sabrina. But now that's over. Well, yeah, but her she she's got no parents now. Yeah, that's true. No parents. I yeah. mean, I, I mean, I guess maybe her dad is is still living. In, if it was a divorce situation, but like that's terrible. Sabrina pleaded guilty and was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after thirty years. So they both base basically both got the same sentence. Incredibly sad. Yeah, it's sad. I mean. Crazy, 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 crazy. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, go to talkmore.com if you guys want to see the photos on that. Crazy, sad case. The guy should be fucking shanked in his nuts. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we're going to order some DoorDash. Good night, you lovely, lovely people. <laughs>